I'm live, yes. Hi there, welcome. Great to have you here. And if you're watching the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments, you know how it goes. If you're here live at any point, then the chat is right here, ready and waiting for you, and I'm waiting for your questions as well, because this is a and a So, looking forward to all of that, and I'm here just a minute or so early, so I can just help you come on board. Do let me know in the chat if you're here live, and let me know whether you can see and hear me. Can you see and hear me? Can you see and hear me? Let me know. I hope so. This is my first time on YouTube Live. I have done Facebook Live, IG Live, so many other lives in the last few years so that I've never done a YouTube Live before. So this is exciting. Um, and it means that you, all five and a half thousand of you, can come along here and ask me questions because that's why you're subscribing. You want to connect and you want to see videos and you want to learn more about knitting. So Go ahead and ask me questions. You can ask me questions in the chat. You can ask me questions in the super chat. I can't see the comments at the moment, so it will only be in the comments after this has been live. What we're talking about today is you have to start somewhere when you're selling your knits. And that's the exciting thing about selling your knits. It's thinking, what do I already know? How can I start? And where do I start? So I've got a few steps for you that just go through and make it feel easier. I think that's the whole thing, is that when we take on a new adventure, we can second guess ourselves, make it as difficult as possible, because we're scared. And that fear inside us is going, okay, I, I like that fear. It's really driving me forward. So I'll look for some more fear and that will drive me forwards as well. But it's actually holding us back. So let's make it easy. Let's take a few steps and make it easy. So profitable knitting. You know that I've obviously got a knitting business. I've been selling my knits for a very long time. I don't sell my finished knits anymore unless I've got a friend who says, do you have anything in stock? I'd love a baby blanket or a baby beanie or something like that. And I'd say, yeah, here you are. It's in the drawer here, all right, you can have it. And then I will sell it to them. But I don't go out to craft fairs or anything like that currently. What I do is different. I have a different knitting business. I teach knitting. I've obviously got the YouTube channel, all sorts of things like that. So I've been selling patterns for a while, coming up for 10 years now and all sorts of different things like that. So I've seen all stages and all types of knitting business in my, in my lifespan, um, because I was selling my knits when I was a teenager as well. So just be aware. Hi there, Kim, great to have you here. Just be aware that you can start right out and have a real good go, but only if you make it easy. If you overcomplicate, then you're just gonna have so many things to juggle that it will feel far too difficult. That was one of my problems. When I started out, I was selling so many different things that I was going, I need to practice that, I need to practice that, I need to make sure I'm going to that shop so that they get my money to me and I get them more items. And, and it was all over the place. It felt like a real juggle. So when you want to sell something, let's make it easy. So the first step I've got for you, because you have to start somewhere, is, hi there Jackie, yes, do tell me where you're from, North Myrtle Beach, fantastic. It sounds very exotic, a lot more exotic than South of England. <laughs> so you have to start somewhere. So the first step is you love to knit. You wouldn't be here otherwise, would you? So what do you love to knit? That's a great starting point. You don't wanna sit down and go, oh, hate knitting this kind of thing. Why am I selling it? I totally resent it. Everyone, every time someone asks me for it, oh, I wish I wasn't doing this. Because that's a J-O-B where you're making money because you have to make money. You have the choice. You're in charge here. So you're allowed to make those choices and make those decisions so that it feels easier. Just recognize that. Hi, Juliet. Lovely to have you here. And you're in the far flung Eastern Europe, aren't you? <laughs> and Meryl, how do you store all of the items you're making and not selling? 
Right, good idea. Stick that in the Q&A, um, and I will try and remember to come back to it. I will be going through this all the way, all the way, um, all the way through the end. Right, so Q and A's later. But what do you love to knit? Do you like big knits? Do you like small knits? Just sit down and write this out a few times. Go through this as a replay as well, and think about all of this again. What yarn loves do you have? What yarn hates do you have? If you really hate knitting with mohair, you don't want to start selling things that are knitted with mohair, do you? Do you hate knitting with tiny needles? So you'd love to knit with big needles or medium-sized needles. Just recognise that these kind of choices will make a big difference when you're actually knitting something to sell. It will make a difference to how much you're enjoying it, how much you want to come back to it every day, and how much you feel really passionate and excited when you're finally selling what you've knitted. So you do want this to be a challenge. That's why you've said, I love knitting. I now find this easy. I'm looking for a new challenge. But you don't want every single part of this to be a challenge. You want the knitting to be easy. The hours and hours that you might do every week of knitting, you want to feel, I love this. It feels great. That's why I'm doing it. The challenge will be in deciding um, how you price things, in setting up a website maybe, or shop online on Etsy or Folksy, something like that. Just recognize that this, even if it's on the side or it's a full-time thing, it's the knitting that you're gonna be doing every day. So let's make that easy. And the challenge will be the other little things that you add to it. You already knit those extra things that are exciting to you and are just going to give you that extra push and start making money from it. So the other things you might ask yourself if you really want to do this is who do you like knitting for? If you love knitting baby items, fantastic. You love, knit, you love babies, fantastic. But if you don't like knitting baby items or you get really fed up when you have mums coming to you go, oh, look at my baby, isn't she lovely? Then you just Get, get annoyed with that every single time it happens. Then you don't want to start knitting baby items, do you? Um, what time of year do you like knitting for? If you hate knitting with wool, but you love knitting with cotton, then you're gonna start knitting things that may be for the home, that may be for a different part of the year than a really wool, um, woolly, comfy, cozy kind of knit. Do you think about the end user, like I just said? Who are you going to be discussing things with when you're knitting? And what kind of photos do you need to take at the end of it so that you can sell your knitting? Those kind of things are really important to just consider now so that when you get to that further stage, you think, oh, this feels easy as well. Not just the knitting that feels easy, it's the other things that feel easier than they possibly could be. So do you like knitting for Christmas? Is that your jam? Do you say, oh, I just love Christmas, it really is part of me. If I could knit Christmas decorations, Christmas ornaments all the year round, I would be in a dream world. We'll do it. You know, red and green and white, navy blue and white with all the snow all over it. Then you just, you're knitting up these things because you love it. So recognize that it's not just, I love knitting. It's exactly what do I love knitting? Who do I love knitting for? And what kind of knitting do I love doing? So it's a bigger picture that you can look at and just kind of recognize that you are unique. This is gonna be easy for you because we want to make your business unique so that you stand out because you already are unique. You've had so many different experiences in life. Just think about the knitter who's sitting by your side or is just down the road from you. They started knitting pretty much the same way that you did, but they were inspired by something else. They said, oh, the Cafe Facet jumper or the Vivian Westwood jumper from 20 years ago. I want to knit that kind of thing. And you said, color knitting does not really entice me. I'm a cable knitter. I'm going in that direction. Already there are differences and already there are things that are just setting you apart from someone else. That's how we want to think about your business as you go forward and start making profit. Because everyone thinks, everyone's selling what they knit, but everyone isn't selling exactly what you sell. And there are people out there who go to large department stores and they want knitwear in different styles and different types and different sizes. That's how you can identify yourself and that's how they can identify you as the kind of knitter they want to buy from. So the whole idea of saying, everybody does this too, 
can really put you off and really make you double double step and double check what you're doing and don't need to think about it like that you can say I love to knit this is where I'm going I'm going to make it easy and I have to start somewhere so that's your first step what do you love to knit who do you love to knit for and the types of things that you like to knit as well so step number two this is really interesting because you're knitting what you sell. You, sorry, you're selling what you knit, okay. That's a very small part of the knitting market. There are lots of other things that you could sell within the knitting market. And I know this is where everybody starts and it is a perfect place to start. But just think about your experience in other parts of your life, um, what you love about knitting. Is there something in the list that I'm about to give you that just clicks with you and you go, oh, yes, I want to move in that direction. Yes, that's totally me. Because that will be maybe a second part of your business or maybe it's where you're moving in your business that just gives you a guidance, gives you a vision and it will just make you even more unique. That's what we're looking for. This really special business that defines you as an amazing knitter. Okay, think about this. You're selling the finished items. Fantastic. Do you take commissions? Because you're in charge of what you knit. You're in charge of the pattern. You're in charge of the yarn. You're in charge of the sizes, the colors. And then someone else says, I want that pattern, that size, that color. And I'm having you knit it for three months' time. That is the kind of knitting you could do because it lets other people have choices too, but you're defining it in the first place. That could be something that just defines you as a unique knitter. A lot of people out there are selling what's finished. A lot of the department stores are selling what's finished. A lot of knitters are selling what's finished. And they might be unique designs every single time. But you can always also say, I have so many commissions that I can knit every month. Come and get it. Make your choice. So that is also something that you might like. You want everyone to be able to be just that little more involved in what it is that they buy. If you love talking to people, if you love communicating in that way, say, I really want to help you, I really want to nurture you as a customer, as part of my audience, then they'll go, yes, I'm in. That's who I want to be. So do you also love communicating with other businesses? Do you love collaborating with other businesses? If you've had that kind of experience in your life before, maybe you've just got loads of friends around you who also have self um, uh, small businesses and you just already are in part of that circle. That's part of who you are. Interior designers may want finish knits. Photographers, just imagine all of the baby photos that are done every year. They're going to want new trends, new colors every year of baby hats, of baby blankets, of booties and things so they can put props around the kids when their children when they're having the when they're having the photographs taken that kind of thing is ideal um, and that could be your customer you don't have to think about the general population around you it's just the photographers that you say I'm here do you want them that's it that could be your target audience and that could be who you knit for what about coffee shops? Do they want tea cozies? Or do they want a real stack of tea cozies to sell to their customers? It could be part of their genre of the teapot, uh, the, the tea shop that they run. And that's what they want. So you are the knitter that they go to for that kind of thing. What else? Do you like the idea of selling the photographs of your knits? Does that click something in you and go, oh, that's a good idea. That really inspires me. Lots of um, photograph websites out there and you get a paid a small amount every time that they sell your, net, your photograph or someone downloads it for free. Just those options are out there now. We're living in a world where everything is online and you can also sell your photographs as prints um, to uh, uh, go in a frame, that kind of thing. So just recognize that the world is out there and your knitting could do so many different things. Do you want to design and sell the patterns? You're wondering when I was going to say that, weren't you? If you design your own knits already, if you're that far advanced with your knitting and you go, oh, I don't want to read anyone else's patterns. I love making my own. Everything I knit is new. Then you can decide to sell those patterns if you want to. Sell them online. Sell them um, to a publisher and license them to a publisher. They can go in a book. All sorts of different 
ways to sell your patterns and that could be how you explore start selling your finished knits now and then explore the idea of selling the patterns and that could be where you go from there get real interest and exciting uh, excitement about your style of knitting now and move towards selling the patterns later what about the idea of selling the patterns and yarn in subscription boxes that is a major new industry that's popped up in the last five, 10 years. And there are now easy ways to do that. It's so easy now to set up a subscription business online. Done, sorted. And your knitting could be part of that. Build yourself up by selling what you knit and then just bring that in in six months, 12 months time as a second part of your business. That's where you're aiming for. You're gonna start recognizing that you're designing patterns, you're selling what you knit, so people are seeing who you are, but you're moving towards that vision further down the line. Um, also, you can become an affiliate marketer. <laughs> if you've done that in the past for another business maybe, and you go, oh, that's so easy, just go and find some yarn companies, go and find um, pattern companies, then you send people to the yarn and the patterns in a different way um, to the different websites and you earn commission from everything that uh, people buy from your links. Easy done. Doesn't that sound great? Um, how about sharing your daily knitting journey by writing about it? Do you love writing? Is that part of who you are? You can write a blog, you can write articles for magazines, you can write books. All sorts of different things because you love knitting. You love sharing your knitting. Um, building up the interest by selling what you knit already. That's a good start. And then you can start writing about it right from the get-go. Two or three hours a week instead of knitting your writing. That sounds easy in so many ways because you love writing and you love knitting. So bring them together and writing something that becomes an epic um, doesn't take two weeks. Writing blog posts and getting used to writing blog posts takes a while. Getting used to writing chapters for a book takes a while. So just recognize that you've got to start somewhere. You need to have some kind of journey that you're acknowledging in your writing. So start there. Start writing about your knitting journey now. I started writing my first blog in 2012. And look at me now, I'm doing YouTube videos and writing blog posts and I'm writing other stuff as well that you don't know anything about. <laughs> um, but it's all to do with knitting. And in, back, in, uh, back in the year 2011, I was writing about um, my other crafts as well. So it's taken time for me to get there. And if I hadn't sort of left this chunk of time in the middle, it would all be a lot more closer together. Um, but now I've had that practice and I've moved into a real niched area of blogging, it means that it makes sense. I'm writing about my knitting and I'm writing other things about knitting too. So it's just a case of saying, what can I feel um, inspired by? What do I love about the knitting industry? What are the other knitting businesses around me that inspires me and encourages me and wants me to go forward? It could be that simple that you're inspired by selling what you knit. That could be all that you need to be inspired by. But if that does inspire you and then something else clicks as well, then those two things will just sit together in your business and make you unique. That's what we're looking for. So those are the main things. Sell what you knit and sell your patterns. And then that's what you're beginning with. You will learn what inspires you and you will figure out your journey as time goes by. Don't feel that you have to move really quickly into learning all these other things too. It's just to get going and to get started, you have to start somewhere. And the best way to start is to sell what you knit or sell your patterns. That's how I feel that it's easiest um, to just say, right, what's the simplest? What's the most basic way to make money from my knitting? It is those two things. Sell what you knit because you're knitting, or if you're that more advanced in your knitting and you're making your own patterns, sell the patterns as well or instead of your knitting. We've got some new faces here. Hi there, Meryl. Um, Eileen from Colorado. Katrina from Iowa. <sighs> Fantastic. And Meryl is from California. Joanne from Boston, Massachusetts. And Kim's from Bristol. 
What a worldwide set we have here today. And you're all here at different times of the day as well. It's what I love about YouTube. You're all watching me at different times of the day and I'm half asleep and I wake up and see that I've had another 500 views and, oh, okay, I was asleep but you were watching me on YouTube. <laughs> now, I have sold so many things over the last 20 years of my life and even longer than that because I started when I was 12, selling what I knit um, and selling all sorts of different things. But I have focused more on knitting in the last 15 years. And I ended up with this niche of knitting. I'm not saying that everything you need to do is going to take that long. But if you're just getting to the point where you're saying, I've decided and I'm at that point where I've made that choice, then it can be as simple and easy to understand as possible. You're not going to have to do hashtag all the things so that everyone follows you and everyone feels that you're unique. You can be unique by being very simple and easy to understand. And I, I, I do feel that if um, businesses overcomplicate what they're doing, then it can be very difficult for the customers to understand them. So I do love recognising that there are many years ahead of me in my life and you can recognise that too in your life. Where are you now And when you think about how you were 10 years ago? How different does your life look? Uh, you might be somewhere completely different in 10 years' time. But that vision that you've got for your knitting business and where you're starting today is taking you to that place. It's starting somewhere. And it's like saying, what's the best time to plant a tree if you haven't got one already? It's not 50 years ago because you can't go back 50 years and plant a tree. It's now. And then you'll have that tree for the rest of the next 50 years to look at and enjoy and be inspired by. That's how life works. It's making the decision and making the choice to say, yes, I'm starting. And I'm starting by recognizing the beauty and the joy that knitting gives you. That's, that's what I always want to just um, encourage with my videos. It's that knitting is something that can give us that joy and give us the encouragement to keep going and be, be creative for many, many years to come. And share that beauty and creativity with other people too. So you may have seen on my Instagram and on Facebook that I shared a post yesterday um, just letting you know about the firsts that I've had in my business. And this is where I'm gonna help you cheat with your firsts, because this is step number three. It's recognizing your previous experience did just touch on this slightly in step number two, but your third step is to say, where have I had firsts before where I can actually use them now in my knitting business? So my firsts have been, I started taking photographs for my business, not with an iPad, but with a camera. I started recognizing that I could sell my knitting patterns and I sold my first knitting pattern in 2016. That was exciting and my first was selling my first course my next um, first was doing a video and uploading it to YouTube and then three months later I realized that I could schedule them on YouTube I could film a video I could edit it I could upload it to YouTube and then say I don't have to be there at 9 30 to make sure that it goes live I can ask YouTube to make it go live for me ah that was exciting hi there Joe don't worry this is all going to be available for you to watch as a replay. So there are lots of firsts in so many people's businesses, whether it's a creative business, whether it's a tech business, whether you're building a house, every single thing is going to be a first. It can be, you're just saying, I've sold my first item. I've got my first customer selling, uh, buying something different. For the first time, I'm writing my own pattern. All of that kind of thing is just going to be that series of firsts and then it feels easier. So let's cheat the system and recognize that we can pick firsts out from the rest of our lives to make it a lot easier for you. Okay. Just also, this is a really interesting cheat because just think about your age as well. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to tell you I am 45, but I've got a firsts in my life that can help me in my knitting business. And I've taken those firsts and I've said, yes, I'm using them in my knitting business because they really, really help me. So if you're young, you 
live with a great deal of joy in the world, but you also probably have a great deal more computing skills than us oldies do. <laughs> I had to learn how to build a website, whereas probably I could have gone to my niece or my nephew and said, can you build me a website? And they say, uh, yeah, uh, what are you talking about? I had to do that in school last week. But I had to go through that whole system <laughs> and work out how to do it. So just recognize that there are lots of things in your life and your age will be one of those things that will make it difficult or it will make it easy for you. If you're older, you've got wisdom and patience from the years of your living. And it feels so easy. Just make it feel much easier for you to go, that's a mistake, let it go. Okay, pass on, move forward and see the next step as an interesting lesson that I've learned from that. And I take it and move a bit forward in a bit of an easier way. If you're a new parent, perhaps you're dealing with nappies and toddler tantrums, you're recognizing every day that you want a legacy and you want to grow that for your children. You want them to see how, how much you are learning every day, how much you are going to be, uh, you're going to be building something your family can be proud of. That kind of experience in your life will just give you that chance to say, I'm encouraging that in my knitting business too recognizing all that I've learned for the rest of my life. But what about your career too? Does your career experience really help you in your knitting business? Are you an accountant? Have you always been good with maths? Are you always gonna be a fabulous an accountant and bookkeeper? You can be the pricing queen. You can come and give me lessons about pricing. I'm pretty good at pricing, but I bet you could teach me something if you're an accountant, you've been doing that kind of thing for years. What about being a marketer? How about being on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Pinterest? You're gonna to be top of the pops as a marketer. You're gonna be writing those posts, getting it all done, and you really are gonna let those trends not go over your head because you'll be quite happy with them. As a marketer, you're gonna say, yes, I'm in, I'm in, that's, that's who I am. So you will be selling what you knit, but you'll also be doing really well on social media. Are you an amateur photographer? Do you say, I'm always the one who takes the photographs for the staff picnic or um, uh, when we need a little bit of a photograph for the um, website at work? Well, you can do that for your business as well. Just recognize these things. It's part of who you are. It makes so much sense to you. Let's just make it easy. And that can be a really big part of your business and it will make life easier for you when you're starting to build your business up. Have you built a website before? Lots of people have. In 2011, I had to build my blog and it really, really helped me when I came back and said, I really want to do this big time and I'm not going to use someone else's website. I want to build my own website. Having written a blog, having been in the background of a blog and understood how the little pieces work, it felt so much easier to then spend a week or so putting up a really simple website. Done. It was easy. That kind of thing can just make such a difference because you recognize that it's not so important that some people think it might be. It's, it, all it is is some text and some pictures, but you need a little bit of technology in the background. So do you have those skills and you can just bring them to your knitting um, business too? If you love PR and all you want to do is review patterns and review yarns, then you could be the ideal YouTube knitting queen as well. And you could write um, stuff for magazines too. So you can pick up little parts of your business and just bring them to different places. All of these are jumping off points and they're places for you to start alongside knitting, selling what you knit. This kind of thing will make your business unique. That's what I said earlier. It's recognizing that other people sell what they knit but that doesn't mean that they're your competition. There's so much knitwear in the world, so many things that people want to buy. They want different colors, they want different sizes, they want different styles, and you cannot knit everything. What you can knit is what you love to knit, and you can be there. Someone else is here, someone else is here, someone else is here, and someone else is here, and you can all collaborate, and you can go, well, 
no, I don't knit that, but I know who does. And they can go, well, I know that person knits that, but I recognize that person knits that too. So let's all collaborate and bring everyone together. It's not so much a competition. You, everybody here on the chat, if you want to start selling what you knit, you're friends, you're mucking in together, you're doing this together. And I can bet when you decide what you're knitting, no one else here on the chat in the comments when this is played on replay will be selling exactly what you sell as well. I don't know anybody who sells what I sell. I really have looked. Can I see a knitting company that sells the courses that I sell? No, because what I sell, the way I sell them, the way I teach is unique. So really recognize that the things you can bring into your knitting business makes it easy for you and you do not have to make it difficult just recognize the simplicity is what we're looking for and you have to start somewhere start somewhere with the kind of things that you want like start somewhere with what you love joe says surely lots of people sell baby clothes yes lots of people do sell baby clothes but there are lots of babies out there as well and lots of people will not use the yarn that you use. Not, lots of people will not use the same pattern that you use, will not make the same sizes that you make, will not be in the same place and send stuff to the same people. So people will find you and then other people will find someone else. You cannot knit baby clothes for every single baby on the planet who wants hand-knitted items. But someone over here will say, I'm not really sure about hers, but I will buy hers. And then someone over here will go, I really love Joe's, so I'm not going to buy hers. So it's the style, it's your unique um, way that you sell things, it's the unique way that you market what you do, it's the unique way that you communicate with the people who want those baby clothes. That makes you the number one person that they want to go to. Everyone is going to love the baby clothes that you sell because they want to love the baby clothes that you sell. If people want to say, I want something else in a different style, in a different colour, at a different size, from a different place, then they will go to a different person who sells baby clothes. That's what I'm trying to get across, is you are unique. You are making choices in your business that will put people off, and you're making choices in your business that will have people flooding to you. Um, and you cannot serve everybody. I cannot serve everybody. I may have an online business, but if I had as many people who were on my um, YouTube uh, subscriber list in my membership, then I feel that I possibly couldn't serve them very well. I'd have to create a different kind of system for people. Um, if I had 5,000 people, 5,500 people in my membership, then there's no way I could serve all of them. If, I, if everybody had pattern co um, questions coming up um, every single day, then I seriously could not sit there and help everybody with those pattern questions. So they will find someone else to help them. But those people who really um, like what I teach, the way that I teach, do want to come and join the membership. So that kind of thing is what I'm just trying to say. It's the way that you run your business, the way that you do your business, love your business, encourage people in your business that makes people um, flood to you or flood to somebody else. And that's what you want to say. Can't serve everybody, but I can serve you because you are really attracted to me, just like I'm really attracted to you as a customer. So that is what I've got for you today, those first three steps. So the first one was decide what it is that you love to knit because you wouldn't be here otherwise. You want to sell what you knit and you want to really find it easy and feel it a real joy every time you pick up those needles and the yarn. Second thing is, go back and listen to the list if you want to and think, what inspires me about knitting so I can have some kind of vision, some kind of exciting thing that I'm aiming for. Do I want to create all this wonderful baby clothes, for example, Joe, and have a collection three times a year? Is that what really inspires me? Do I want to sell so many baby clothes that people start asking me for patterns and yarn so they can knit their own thing? Do I want to sell baby clothes and actually encourage people to go and use the same yarn that I'm using to knit different things? And that, that would mean that I had a commission business alongside it and I'd send people to um, yarn stores um, through affiliate links. That kind of thing that you're looking for, just a vision 
for where your business is going. It can be a real help. When I started, my vision was to create teaching items, teaching things. I love teaching. Even back when I was making my first real collections in 2008, alongside it, I wanted to do workshops. There weren't enough people in my local area to say, yes, I'm in doing these very specific workshops that Hannah's doing. But this is why I'm here now, because I always knew I could create these series of classes that make sense, that give people a roadmap on where they're going um, in their knitting. That's why I'm here now. That's why I have series of videos on YouTube. That's why I teach series of um, classes in my business. Um, because I had that vision and I was moving towards it. I knew that and it took a while to get there because different things happened in my life that stopped me occasionally. But I was always on that path towards that. 10 years after 2008, when I had that first vision, I was there. I was selling patterns and I was selling workshops on my website. So think about your vision and 10, 10 years time, it needn't take that long to get so far, but five years time, you can be there. Three years time, you can be there. So that's what I'd love for you to recognize that that vision is available to you. That path is where your first step starts today. And the third thing we were looking at, the third step for today, was recognize your previous experience and how you can draw on it to make your business unique. Because your business is unique, you are unique. All of the experience, inspiration that you draw from other parts of your life will just build your business up to help people recognize it as an individual and inspiring brand. What I do have for you um, alongside these questions that I wanted to answer, how do you store of the items that you're not making, that you are making and not selling? I have a chest of drawers here with my items in. They're folded, they are in individual bags, and I have, if I can find an example, I have little cedar balls, um, which prevents moths and um, other bugs. So that is set alongside all of the knitted items there. So in, um, in one of my courses, um, Intuitive Knitting, I go into this in a much deeper way as well um, and teach you how to care and store what you've finished knitting. But it's to keep it folded nicely, to make sure that it's um, finished completely so that you've finished all the knitting, every single end is sewn in, and that it's stored in a way so that it's not compressed. Certainly do not put it in vacuum bags or anything like that. But only knit enough so that you have what you need to sell. Um, and store it in a sensible way. Because if it's going to be damp or it's going to be too hot so it gets full of condensation or anything like that, then that's really not sensible, is it? <laughs> so just... Take your time and think about where it can be stored. Um, I would suggest natural. I have a blanket box, a wooden blanket box, and I have a wooden chest of drawers. And a couple of these cardboard boxes have got finished knits in them as well that I use for my photograph props as well. So, yeah, it's about taking time to just recognize that. Um, go for it, Marilyn, if you want to ask a couple more questions. But, you know, that's that's fine. That's why I'm here. It's a Q&A. What I do have for you is the workshops that are going over this summer. If you want to join me for them, I'm going to help you set up your business. <laughs> what hands does Miss Marple hold her yarn in? I'm sure she knits like me because I used to watch her knitting, Joan Hickson, in the, 2000, uh, the 1980s series of Miss Marple. I used to watch her. She was one of my knitting knitting icons my mum my grandma my aunties a couple of my mum's friends and miss marple um uh, joe that's um agatha christie novels and it was um tv adaptations and joan hickson joan hickson used to knit so quickly and i said well if she can knit quickly she's remembering her line she's talking to somebody and she's got someone telling her um where to sit and how to how to Eat, drink her coffee at the same time, drink a beautiful cup of tea and a bone china teacup, then 
I I can knit that quickly too. So I watched her knitting. <laughs> oh dear. How do you suggest making time for knitting when it's not your full-time job? Well, this is when um, I suggest you you do come and join me for these workshops or you take the um, Profitable Knitting Secrets course because there are lots of ways that you can sell knitting so that it's not selling your time so much. Like I've suggested so many ways today, you sell something, but then you can sell the same thing over and over and over again, like the pattern, like the photograph, all that sort of thing. Um, I've got a couple of workshops in there that talk about pricing things and making sure that your business serves you if time is something that you want to reduce. Um, so making time for knitting, it's making time for it. You've put it in, the, in your question. It is, yes, Ms. Marple is using the right hand to hold her yarn. It's making time for it. It's putting it in your planner. It's putting it in your diary. It's putting notifications in your phone or on your computer and saying, this time every week, this time every day, I am knitting. I'm letting go of everything else in that time. I'm not going to sit there and um, watch a telly at the same time because it distracts me, it makes me make mistakes. I'm not going to, um, I don't know, I'm not going to try and follow an audiobook at the same time because that distracts me too. That, it can be confusing. Um, so make time for it. Put it in your daily, daily um, or weekly planner so that you are making time for it make it a priority something else has become a priority and it's just sitting there going through Facebook and you know that it's distracting you you know that it's time that you could use better then put it in your diary and make sure that you're using it um, I'm using that time well right I am just going to tell you about these workshops and then I will come back to those questions do not do not worry so these workshops are going through the summer, once a month for six months. So all the way through to October, I'm here for you, for Q&As, for um, lots of different subjects we're going to discuss and to help you build your business and prepare your business to, obviously at the moment we need to make sure that we're running businesses online a lot of the time. Um, we can do um, online shops and send people things we can do online shops and sell things online so that it's downloadable that kind of thing so we are going to focus on six different subjects first of all we're going to talk about niches choosing your perfect knits for profit we're going to assess and prepare your knitting so that you make the right choices for you now and do recognize that this is the right choice for you now if you want to change those choices in two years' time, that's perfectly acceptable. Doesn't mean this is a all and done finished. I've made changes in my business in the last three years. I've accepted things in my business and I've said no to things in my business. This is what's right for you now. And the next one will be the pricing workshop. So we'll talk about that quickly and soon. So you can get sorted, you can get your shop sorted, you can start selling things and use the right prices. So that's um, not a problem. Um, I can help you set your prices and we're going to go through that through a whole workshop with Q&A as well. Then the next one is talking about being you. Now, many of you will know personality quizzes, archetype quizzes, all that kind of thing where you really recognize the truth inside of yourself, who you are, what makes you perfectly you. And I've spoken about this a little bit already. In just in today's, it's know what you love, know what makes you you, know what makes you feel right, all that kind of thing. But you, I've come up, I've created archetypes through the knitting genre and the creative genre. It's really going to help you say, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Because once I've done this and I've gone through the quiz myself, I thought that makes so much more sense why I'm doing this and why I'm choosing that because of who I am in the archetype realm too. So the third workshop, you'll have a quiz to go through and you will have a whole workshop to help you generate more ideas around that. So the fourth one is talking about knitting blogging. Blogging has changed a lot in the last 15 and 20 years. We're not sitting there talking on forums anymore and just writing long pieces that hardly anybody reads. We're not filling our blogs up with Google ads. And if you are, then people are fed up with it and they're going away. 
So we need to recognize that we're blogging for today. Blogging is completely different. And yes, it doesn't all have to be on a, your own website. I promise you that you will recognize a completely different way to run a business and to market yourself within the knitting realm too. The fifth one, which is in September, we're going to talk about repeat customers and finding super fans. This is why um, defining yourself as a knitter and a unique knitter and an individual knitter is so important because then people flock to you because of who you are and it really does help you shine. Your light will suddenly go, oh, exactly, that's brilliant. <laughs> you don't have to vlog if you don't want to, Joe. don't worry. <laughs> Oh dear. No, we don't have to talk about pets going to the vet or anything like that. Don't worry. You recognize, I'm sure, that you're a re repeat customer of many people. You may have the same hairdresser. Well, maybe not now, but you may go to the same hairdresser and you may have been going to the same hairdresser for many years. I know I have because they know how to cut my hair. It feels easy and that's life. You want an easier life, don't you? It's the same thing when people want knits, when they want to buy something from you. There, I know that there are many knitters out there who run subscription businesses as well, and they send patterns out and yarn out, and the same people they get the same they get the boxes month after month after month, and if they want an individual pattern and the yarn, then they just go back to that same website because it feels easy, it feels right, and they love the customer service. They love exactly how these people, these customers, these businesses work with them, um, and then. Do not panic. In the sixth one, I'm going to help you move forward and run your business in a way that helps you focus, you make choices, you make decisions, and you live your business week to week without my help. You can continue having my help if you want to. Um, I'm sure by then I will have <laughs> I will have created something so that we can work together in a longer term. But in October, in that last um, in that last workshop, I will unveil all of the little secrets that I use in my business so that I know how I'm moving forward day by day and week by week. It's no, it's not a joke. It's no surprise that I'm here where I am now talking to you live on YouTube with a successful website with a knitting business that's going strong because I do things daily, weekly, monthly, annually, and it makes a massive difference to my business. I'm going to share all of that with you too. So if you want to go and have a look at and you want to join me, there you go. Knitwithhannah.co.uk forward slash workshops hyphen 2020. That will take you to the website and you can go and sign up for those workshops. And let me know in the comments if you've signed up because we can keep working together for the next six months. And I'd love to help you. Um, I'd love getting to know your businesses today and I'm going to continue answering the questions. Don't worry. We can talk about Miss Marple, have a cup of tea together with our bone china and yes, just build your businesses. If you're starting now or if you think I need a rebrand or if you're sitting there thinking I don't like where my business is going, I need to make different choices, then it, this will really help you get going again. Um, <laughs> I love the questions you've got there. Oh, dear. There we go. So that is where you want to go if you want to carry on working with me and getting my support. Because, yes, there are profitable knitting secrets. Um, <laughs> there are profitable knitting videos here on YouTube. And you can go and look at them. And I'm doing IGTV videos as well. But being in the workshops will just help you dive that bit deeper make decisions and get one-to-one -one feedback from me too. Okay, wow. Let's go through these questions. Uh, yes, Miss Marple is using the right hand to hold her yarn. When did you know you were ready to start knitting for profit? It was when I felt that I was confident in my knitting, that I wasn't making mistakes, that um, I wasn't making mistakes. Well, I was still making mistakes. I make mistakes today. I was reading a pattern the other day and I made a mistake. I didn't change the yarn, the needle size. Thankfully, it wasn't something that had to be a particular size. It could be any size I wanted it to be. But I'd made a mistake and I'd been knitting for about three hours before I noticed what I was doing wrong. So I make mistakes, but I was knitting enough without making mistakes. 
Um, I think that was a big point. And I feel confident in my knitting. Um, having people actually say, cool, that's good. Did you know that yourself? Help me recognize that my knitting was good enough to be sold. It was, um, yeah, really feeling the confidence inside me. Go and do some confidence classes or meditation or something to see that you are a unique person, like I keep saying, and every single one of us is necessary on this planet to help each other, to shine lights and to um, give each other beauty and confidence as well. So just building that um, as part of your life as well really helped me see that I was ready to sell my knitting um, and it grew in that arena as well. I've been doing a live video, feels easy to me now, but doing a live video three years ago was really scary. So it all comes with time and you will see you've sold your first knit. Oh, is it good enough? Uh, I don't know whether it's going to come back because they've noticed a hole or something. Well, no, they won't because you've knitted with a ball of yarn and a pair of needles and they go, how did you do that? It looks like you bought it in a shop. But you knit and you find it easy. That is one of the things that I want everyone here to recognize. You love knitting and you find your knitting easy. There are so many people on the planet who will go, uh, that looks like a ball of string and two pieces of wood. What are you talking about? So of, of course it's gonna feel like a bit of a cheat to just give something to somebody that you've knitted and ask money for it. But it isn't a cheat. It's exactly what you're here for. Okay, Joe, I'm planning to knit when I can and then launch a site when I have stock and paying my 17-year-old to do photos and website. That's her thing. What a fabulous idea. I love that. Yes. See, that's perfect. It's utilizing other parts of your life to make it work for you. Brilliant. Ashley, how do you know when you've found your niche? Um, yes, I love knitting so many things. Well, I talk about this um, over on IGTV, so do go and have a look at those videos as well. Um, but choosing a niche, finding a niche can happen in so many ways. It can be about the end user as well. So it can be, just go and watch those IGTV videos. I really think they would help you. Um, it's, it's a very long story and it's a very long answer, but it doesn't have to be, I only knit socks. It can be, I knit things for this particular kind of person and they want this range of things. And you do not have to just knit for your business. Just because you want to knit socks for your business, just picking something out of the air, doesn't mean you can't knit yourself a lace shawl. You know, go and knit yourself a cardigan, but you're knitting socks to sell. That's um, one thing that I recognize a lot of profitable knitters think. Oh, I have to knit for my business 24-7. No, you don't. You can knit things as well that have nothing to do with your business. So um, it took me a while to recognize that too. Um, but I recognized over time that I didn't just have to be knitting things that I was about to sell. I could also be knitting things alongside it. And while I was choosing particular things to sell, it was a group, it was a collection. And then I felt inspired and um, very creative in other parts of my business as well. While I was selling some things, I was designing patterns for our next collection. While I was selling some things, I was creating photographs and I was creating my website. So I was creative in other ways too. So recognize that as you grow and as you make choices and decisions, it won't feel so difficult to say, I'm not knitting that anymore. I'm being creative in other ways. And it, it, will, it will feel easier as you make those choices. Jackie, when's the best time to, to move on from knitting small things and move on to big things? Funnily enough, I've got a video coming up about that. Um, so when, let's just say you want to knit a jumper, you've only ever knitted bookmarks and mug cozies. Um, you need to recognize that you can sew, you can follow patterns easily, you are happy knitting lots of things in a row, so you don't mind waiting, you've got patience to say it's going to take me longer to knit a big thing. Do you have patience in other parts of your life? Do you just want to say, okay, well, the next big thing could be a jumper, it could also be a scarf. 
So move on slowly. If you don't recognize you've got that great deal of patience, you need to hold that vision, hold that excitement about finishing that thing, then it will also feel easier. Yeah, Joe doesn't want to vlog. Don't worry, you don't need to vlog, vlog if you don't want to. <laughs> You could do a vlog. There are lots of different ways you can vlog. Um, is it flowers or fish on the shelf behind me? This is flowers. I, um, You will know it on YouTube. I have a painting behind me. And I found these three small canvases um, last year. And I just decided to paint them in a similar vein. So they look like they've come from the... Well, I needed the one that stands behind. I painted the one... That would be difficult, wouldn't it? I painted the one that stands behind me on YouTube and I painted these as well. Um, Ashley, favorite things in it are socks. <laughs> that was a good guess. <laughs> I've written a few of my own patterns, but none of the socks. Have I found my niche? Maybe, I'd experiment. Definitely experiment. Um, just write down, journal. I'd say, what have I, what patterns have I created? What have I, what have I knitted um, that I really love knitting? Which socks do I love? And how many different ways do I know how to knit socks so I could make my own patterns? That kind of thing. Um, just, just take a bit of time and experiment if you're thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Joe, are you sure you want to take me on? I'm a troublemaker. That's fine. <laughs> That's true. So go and have a look at this if you want to. It looks like flowers to me. Yeah, good guess. So the big picture behind me when I'm on YouTube, um, not in my office like I am now, is um, is a buddleia. And that's the kind of similar inspiration. How many different items are too many? I would like baby blanket shawls and disc cloths. You see, you're, that sounds to me like you are feeding towards the same customer. So it's young mums who are eco-friendly um, and you could knit shawls that are for babies, like, for example, shawls that um, you would use as a swaddle blanket, that kind of thing. So that kind of thing. It's the same customer, so that's a niche. Um, how do you price the projects that you sell? That's a whole question. Go and look at the YouTube video which talks about pricing. Because the things that you sell, I'm going to dive deeper into pricing your patterns, pricing things like courses and such like in the pricing workshop because that's a massive question. But go and have a look at the items that you sell, pricing the things that you sell. If I can find it, I will. Um, I tell you what, I'll come back and put it in here later. A lot, ooh, Joe keeps giving the knitting away. I know. Um, I tell you what's what's easier is selling to people you don't know, because then it doesn't feel so. Uh, oh, you can have it because you're my best friend, kind of thing. Um. And up front, you need to start saying that you're selling it and you're starting a business and who is interested, asking them in that way, say, I'm starting a business. Because if someone was starting a business and saying, I'm going to do some accountancy, um, you know, I've done my accountancy degree, I totally love it, I've done my chartered accountancy um, certificates, I'm spot on, I'm going to run my own accountancy business, who wants some bookkeeping for free? There's no way you'd hear anyone ever say that. It's pointless. They would say, I'm starting this business. This is how much I charge. Come and get it. But you say that because with knitting, somehow because it feels easy and it feels like it's a craft, it's a hobby. Um, everybody says that about knitting, if they love knitting and if it feels so easy to them. So just recognize that you're in business that's how you want to start your business and you have to kind of okay the boundaries are in place this is a business anybody want to buy something from me that's how you start there you go do you think the um, too simple anything that's too simple that do you think there are too simple that are to sell 
you have to write that again, Meryl, I'm not sure. How would you deal with people that think you can't make enough money doing knitting before it is, therefore it is silly? Um, you have to say, um, that's their opinion. It's not my opinion. I'm going to go for this because I feel that it is my choice. I'm putting the boundaries in place to just hide what they're saying for the minute. This is um, comparisonitis as well. It's someone saying, oh, yeah, well, their business is going to be so much easier to make money from because I'm going to judge you because you're only knitting. It's don't start comparing yourself with other businesses because of what you do. And don't let other people's op opinions and ideas and life experience come in and just kind of batter you down. Get together with people who believe in you as well. This is why when I first started my knitting business, um, I joined a business group almost immediately. I said, I'm in. I need that support. I need to be able to talk to people who are on my side, who are with me on this, who get where I'm coming from and who also want the same things as me and have a very similar vision. I found a group of creative business people. We were all women and we were all going to the same idea. We want businesses that make us money. We want businesses that help support our family. That's where we're leading. That's where we were going. So find that common ground with other people. You really can do this. Believe in yourself. And other people will say in three years' time, oh, I believed you all along. I knew you could do it, even though they were probably bashing you behind your back before. So, yeah, it's just taking time and recognising in yourself that you can keep recognising this is possible. This really is possible. This really is something that can, you can do. Ashley, I'm 18. I've knitted a sweater and a blanket. Cool. Neither one came out too great, but they were so much fun to knit. There you go. Um, it's all about um, the tension, all about the stitch definition. It's all about um, saying, it, with more experience, it will look better all the way through the whole garment. So that's why I suggest starting with small things. It's, that looks good. That looks a bit better. That looks even better. And then this larger thing looks even better. And then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger items, it will look as good all the way through it. So definitely. Start with mug cozies and you'll see the difference when you've knitted five. Your first one looks a bit dodgy, a bit wibbly wobbly with maybe some holes in it. Then the fifth one looks so much better. And that's how I then say move on to the larger items. Um, a girl I know mentioned knit worthiness. Oh, that's an interesting phrase. <laughs> Jackie, I'm hoping to start a knitted blanket and hopefully it turns out nice enough. I can start selling them. Do I sell blankets and are they a good thing to sell? Yes, you can sell blankets, recognize how long it takes you to knit them and get people to recognize that too. This is where social media comes in really, really handy because you start taking photographs and showing people how long it takes you to knit each item, how long it takes you to knit each square or each piece or each row. And then they'll go, wow, I can't believe it took you three months to knit that. I never imagined that it would take three months to knit that. Or, you know, if you're using a really thick yarn and you're knitting with your arms or something, goodness me, I didn't realise it takes you a whole week to knit that. Of course I'm going to pay you more money. Um, and go and find knitting businesses out there who charge a lot more money and who sell items for a lot more money because they are out there proving that this can be done. Don't go and look at things on, on Etsy um, where someone's selling a beanie for a fiver because that is in some ways devaluing what we're doing. You need to recognize the, the, um, the effort, the experience, the yarn, and the time that's gone into what you knit. Yes, you can sell hand-knitted blankets. I've seen it done. And it's not something that's going to, um, you know, sell. You can't sell 500 of them in three weeks. But you will sell one a week because it takes you that long. Or it, you sell one every three or four weeks because it takes you that long to knit it. But you will be asking the amount of money... And it will be relative to how long it takes you to knit it, how long it takes you to knit it, how much yarn's gone into it, and how much experience has gone into it as well. You go and look on experienced boutique home 
websites, you will see how much large a blankets cost. There's no way that they don't sell them for those prices. They do. So you can sell them for those prices as well. It seems too simple, says Meryl, because you're a knitter. That's all it is. Yarn, needles, you smush them together and they, they create, it creates magic. But lots of people will go, I don't understand it. How do you knit with a piece of yarn and, and a pair of needles? I don't get it. Yes, exactly. I've <laughs> Shyla keeps forgetting to listen and then you've got no idea what I'm talking about. Dope. Ashley, this is so cool. I'm the only knitter in the family and it feels so good to have people who understand me. Come and join the workshops if you want to be with people who understand you for the next six months because I will be there for you and we will be there for you understanding what you do. That's why I'm creating these because I want to support you. I know so many of you knitters out there are going, I'm the only one who does this. Surely it can't be so difficult. And yes, there are going to be steps along the way where it feels difficult. There are going to be decisions you have to make that will feel difficult. But it will feel easier with us by your side. And it will feel easier if you can ask me questions. Um, because I'm happy to answer questions just like I am here. I've been here for another 25 minutes answering questions. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm doing this. So, Ashley, be part of it. Love to have you join us. Knitting groups are the best, yes. It feels so lonely in my house with other knitters, says Jackie. You're a, te oh, you're a teenager and I've been knitting for so long. Yeah, there you go. I started knitting when I was four. And I, when I got to my teenage years, I was knitting. And I was the only one knitting to that standard around me. And it felt difficult because no one else with me was with me on the same ride. So, yeah. Crafting groups are the best. Yes. Smush them together and make knitting magic. Yes. <laughs> Oh dear. Catherine says, prefer the authenticity of wooden needles. Which do you prefer? Which are quickest, metal, plastic, or wooden? So I have actually got a choose your knitting needles video on YouTube. One of the first ones I did. So if you go into my videos, it's either in beginning beginner knitters 101 or I'm sure it's in there actually. Or if you click on videos on my channel. And then you can choose the order that they go and just click them upside down so that you get the oldest ones first and it'll be right there. But I knit with bamboo. And if it's a much thicker needle, then I usually have wooden ones. Because metal, the clicking, um, actually hurts my RSI. I found, I didn't realise what was happening. I looked it up 15 odd years ago. Thank you, Google. Um, and I discovered that the, the vibrations were going through my wrist and all the way through my arm and my bones, and it was just really hurting my joints. So I stopped knitting with metal. Plus, metal can be good because they're quite slippery. So it does mean the stitches move nicely. But then you can also have the problem is that the stitches move too easily, so you lose your stitches. So there's this six of one, half a dozen of the other kind of scenario. I find bamboo, they've got enough um, friction in them. They're not quite so smooth that they are um, losing stitches every second, but they are smooth enough so that it's easy to move the stitches when I'm knitting, when I want them to be moved. Um, plastic, uncomfortable in the summer. If it just happens to be too warm, even with a fire lit in the winter, ugh, I get horrible feelings in my fingers when I'm working with plastic needles. Um, I do find wooden can be heavy, but it's sometimes I do feel it's the only choice for the thicker needles because the bamboo can bend a bit too much. So yeah, that's my choices with needles. I have reintegrated all of my knitting needle sizes into bamboo now, and I have a few wooden with the, um, the interchangeable ones, which are the circular needles, then I have the Pro, Knit Pro wooden ones. There you go. Sound sensitivity, so if it's bad noise day, I use bamboo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wooden ones can be noisy, that's true. Yeah. It's been fabulous. Hour and ten minutes. Oh!
So yes, do come along and join me for the workshops. What I haven't told you is there are lots of bonuses as well. You do go and have a look at the website. There are lots of choice, a lot of options for you to come and join me one to one and get feedback directly on your exact business in a much deeper way. You can ask me questions and I'll learn more about your businesses as the six months go by. But we will get blog busting brainstorms for one person throughout this. As you, you can get to grips on exactly how you want to start marketing yourself with the blog that works for you. 2005 blogs are out. We need to work in 2020 and use the blog system that works for us. Um, and then someone will also get a chance to come and have a one-to-one -one private chat with me all about your network collection, whether that's patterns, whether that's the yarn and the subscription boxes that you want to sell, whether it's selling the individual knits that you've already knitted and you want to sell. We will work out your collection so that it's branded, so that people recognize that it's you. And this will draw on all that you've learned with the previous workshops. We will do this after the third workshop. Um, so that's in July. And then five knitters will get a bonus shop front audit. So what that means is I will look wherever you are selling your stuff, whether you're selling directly on Instagram, whether you've got a website set up, whether you're on Etsy, I will come along and have a look at your shop front as, like I said, whatever it is that you call it, and I will do a feedback audit session on each of those five. And then we'll have a bonus workshop, an extra workshop, um, where I will look at everyone's social media and we will talk about the photographs, the writing, how well you're doing and what you can improve because of what I've learned through my social media over the last three years. So those are the bonuses. Do go and have a look at the workshops over here. Here we go. What's the most popular thing that I sell for profit, says Jackie. Profitable knitting stuff, actually. But... Also, my patterns. I've sold more patterns than anything else. And in the past, it was Fingerless Smiths when I actually sold finished items. So there you go. Profitable knitting courses, patterns, and Fingerless Smiths. So that's my last 13 years experience. Um, I really can't remember the stuff that I sold. I sold lots of hats in the years before then. So that was that was in my teens and 20s. I sold lots of knitted hats. Do I have any advice for taking photographs of knitted products for Etsy or selling online? Um, practice. Seriously, that's the best thing someone ever has ever said to me was practice. It's not taking photographs in bright sunlight. It's um, choosing a few backgrounds that will let you just recognize where you are in a brand. I have like three or four different areas where I take photographs and that makes it a lot easier for me. Um, but practice. Practice, practice, practice. And go and look at other people's photographs as well for inspiration. Um, you know, you're obviously not going to copy because you're taking pictures of different things. Um, but finished knitting products, if someone in the end is going to wear it, then that's also a good tip is to get someone to wear it so people can visualize it in their own life. And that will be wearing that finished item. You crochet as well as knit. Oh, you're welcome, Ashley. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's been such fun. Joe says, I have an antique toy cat that's going to be in all my knitting photos. Yes. Oh, that's lovely. What a brilliant idea. There you go. Yes, knitting and crochet can be really great complements for each other because sometimes the knitted fabric's better than the crochet, sometimes the crochet fabric's brilliant than the net. Uh, crochet fabric's better than the knit. So it's just a great idea to have both in your kit if you ever want one or the other for something. Right, thank you for being here. I do hope I'll see you on the workshops. If you've got any questions, then indeed send me an email. You can ask me on Instagram, you can ask me here. Um, and I'll get back to you. Great. 
I will see you again soon. I will indeed see you on Tuesday, obviously, for the video on here on YouTube. And I'm around on Instagram, obviously. Thank you so much for joining me live. Bye. Happy knitting. <laughs>